Do you need to create a project change request log? Are you not quite sure what columns and information you need to include? Perhaps you are looking for an optimised template that you can leverage going forward. Well, either way, you've come to the right place because in today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly what you need to include, how to build this template, and also sharing with you some tips and suggestions to make this template as accessible and user-friendly for you uh, from this moment going forward. So I'll be showing you some automations and how you can reduce your manual workload. Now, before I delve into showing you how I built this and how you can do the same, I do just want to quickly mention that there will be a link in the description below that will enable you to instantly download this formatted template. So it will save you some time. It will be less than the price of a cup of coffee and it also does help to support this channel. So with that said, let me show you exactly how to build this request log. So I'm gonna be opening up a new sheet in order to show you this. Bear in mind, I'm showing you this tutorial in Excel. You can do that yourself or you can use another tool as well. This could even be within a project management solution and software. What I'm showing you here is the process and the concepts, just adjust it accordingly to suit your own needs. Nevertheless, this is exactly how you build it in Excel. So the first thing that I'd recommend that you do is give the document a name. So if any stakeholder opens this up, if you share it with them, they know exactly what they have in front of them. So for instance, I'm just calling this project change request log. I have put that in cell B1. I'm going to do a little bit of formatting here. I'm going to make this bold and I'm going to increase the font size to 20. At this stage, I'm going to go into the view ribbon and I'm going to put on freeze pane, freeze top row. That way, if you scroll down, you'll notice that this, this first row remains in view. And that's just really effective. It looks really professional. And it's also just, yeah, it's really, really helpful for anyone who's kind of accessing this document, particularly if you've got a lot of project change requests building up. Now, in terms of the columns, I'm now gonna show you those recommended columns and how we can get some nice formatting to, as I say, make this as professional as possible. So here are the columns you're going to want to include. What I'm gonna be doing is I'll, I'll put these all in place first, then we'll set up the formatting, and then I'll give you some of those automations I was referring to at the start of the video. So we need a column for project name. We also, I also recommend including a column for project manager. Now bear in mind, this is a template that I have been working on for years. I've used this for various different projects uh, in my uh, career as a project manager. So this has come uh, in time, basically. I've kind of optimized this over time. So hopefully you can benefit from that. So project start date, change ID, change name, description of change. Now you may want all of these columns, you may not want all of them, but as I say, these are really useful and I think the more kind of columns and information you can capture up front, uh, the better you can always kind of reduce it if you do require that going forward. So we've got change requested. So, sorry, description of change, change requested, that should be by. Then you want date of change request. Then I would recommend status. Then I would recommend priority. And also in this order, then the change impact. Whether an escalation is required. So do you need to include senior stakeholders? An area to include the decision maker, a name or a contact information, and then somewhere for the final decision. Now at this stage, what I would do is I would select all of these. So I've left clicked here and dragged across. I'd bold them and I'm gonna put them in size 14. The other thing that I would do is I would select the fill color and put this in like a, a light gray. That just kind of helps predefine the heading columns and just kind of separates them from the information that's going to follow underneath. Now, this is in font size 12, so there's a bit of differentiation from the column, he column header and the cells underneath. Now, what you can do at this point is you can put on some nice bolding. So you could do uh, select this. So on the home ribbon, select this little area here, and then you can put all borders. And that just gives the content areas a bit of space. You can also at this point press view and remove the grid lines and that again just adds to the visual appeal of this particular template. I'm going to leave them on for now just as we're going through it. Now what I would recommend that you do is left click on this kind of top left 
uh, area here, this kind of triangle thing, and then double left click on one of the column um, areas where it's got that kind of arrow there. And what that essentially does is it just, it creates, it, it kind of changes the column width to an appropriate size based on um, the information that's included. Now I'm actually gonna just kind of uh, zoom out. Hopefully you can see this uh, bottom right. I'm just zooming out just to get this all kind of on view. And then what we're gonna be doing is just kind of dragging these across just to make them, um, yeah, make them the optimal uh, width. Now one thing you can do here is select all of these and you can click on wrap text. And that'll just, what that will help you do is if you change the column width, um, then it will just make the text kind of fall underneath. It wraps underneath if it's if the column is, is not wide enough to include all that information. That's just really useful as well. In fact, I'm gonna select all of these and I'm just gonna do that there. The other thing you can do is you could center these if you wanted to, but I quite like this. You could also put those in the middle of the uh, cell. So home, you can put them at the top, middle, bottom. I like it in the middle and I'm gonna have this on the left. Right, okay, now on to some of the automations. So let me just actually walk you through what you, what you should include in this, these kind of columns. So this is pretty obvious. It, it could be something like Project Alpha or whatever the name of the project is. Project Manager, that could be the name or the email address of that Project Manager. It's completely up to you. Project Start Date. Now what I'd recommend you do here is right click on this column. We're gonna get click on Format Cells and we are gonna turn this into, so select number. So Format Cells, Number, Date put this in date format. What kind of type you want depends on your location. Your lo locale as well will kind of change how that date displays. So as an example, 10th of the 10th, 2024, will now appear in that kind of date format. Okay, so I'll remove that. Change ID, now what I recommend that you do here is you just, every kind of change request that you, or project change request that you have, you give a unique ID. And that's just really useful when it comes to updating stakeholders. So as an example, this could be something like one, two, etc. I think it makes sense to have like a hashtag zero one, zero, hashtag zero two, et cetera, et cetera. I think that just makes kind of more, more sense. Change name, so this will be like a, a 10 character name of a, a rough overview of what the change is. You wanna keep this as minimal as possible. The description of change, I'd actually make this a little bit bigger. Here is where you can provide added context. So, you know, between 50 and 100 words, just giving more context as to what that change is all about. The change requested by it will be that individual who's raised it. It could be the project manager, it could be somebody else. Then you can put a date in. So I'm gonna right click here, format cells. Again, we want that to be date and press okay, because we want that in the same format as the project start date. Status, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna provide some options for a, a drop down for you know you to, to select instead of having to type it every time. That'll also help to ensure that when this is populated, um, you don't have any kind of, you know, a variety of different statuses. It keeps your statuses quite defined. So what I'm gonna do here is select column J, I'm gonna click on uh, data. We're then gonna click on data validation data validation. On the settings and allow, we're going to change this to list. Now the options for status that I recommend are requested, comma, in progress, comma, complete. If you press OK, so you hopefully you can see that. Now you'll notice every single cell in this column will have this little icon and you can select one of those options. If I zoom in, you'll be able to see that in better detail like that, okay? Now, I've actually set this up so that these first three cells uh, basically have this drop down. I don't want that on these three cells, but by selecting the whole column, it enabled me to basically, you know, this goes down indefinitely, and that's exactly what we want. So what I'd do at this stage is just select the first three, click on data, data validation, and we're just gonna remove this to any value. So now, these are just normal cells, but then everything underneath has a drop down. Okay, so now we're gonna do priority, same concept applies, select the column, data, data validation, list. Now the options here I'm gonna say are low, medium, high. You can even put critical as well. They're the options that we could put in here. Press okay. So now these are all the drop down options. Again, select from K1 to K3, data, 
data validation. In the settings, change this to any value. So it's removed it from the top three. Now change impact, again, you could, you could use the same as priority here. So, so in terms of the options, so a low, medium, high. So I'm gonna select column L, data validation, data validation, settings, list, low, medium, high. We're not gonna have Chris kill for this. So low, comma, medium, comma, high. Again, remove this, data validation, change this to any value, okay. Escalation required, again, I recommend um, data validation. So select column M, data ribbon, data validation, data validation, list, yes, no. We need to remove this. So uh, data validation, any value. Now, so we have escalation required, yes, no. Now. If you put no, then this, this column might not be required, but if you put yes, obviously that you would have a decision maker. Here you can put in, again, like the project manager field, it could be the name, it could be the contact information, like their email address or both. Now the decision, again, I'd have this as data validation. So select column O, data validation. Then I'm gonna put list, and then I'm gonna put these as the options. Approved, declined, more info requested. Now, one other column, so, and then I'll remove this, data, remo um, not remove duplicates, data validation, any value. Now, the other column I haven't included thus far is I want an area for notes or additional comments. So I'm just gonna make that larger like that, and I'm going to press home, format painter, and that will just copy the formatting from the cell that was kind of pre-selected. So that's how to create a project change request log with some tips and recommendations along the way. These are the drop downs that I recommend. As I say, if you want to pick up this template, there will be a link in the description below um, and they, you'll get this all kind of created without having to build it yourself. But hopefully this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And with that said, all of the best. and I hope you have an excellent day.